Today's show is about change, well, a change to my reference system. Now, I've been using Klipsch Cornwall 4 speakers for over three years. They're phenomenal speakers. But I wanted to change to a different type of speaker, different design type. So I'm moving on to these speakers that I reviewed earlier this month, the Pure Audio Project Duet 15. It's interesting, by the way, both speakers, the Klipsch and the Pure Audio Project, both have 15-inch woofers. Yeah, there's something about speaker size, driver size, woofer size, that uh, speaks to me. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I'm so into bass, but there's an ease to speakers that have really large woofers. But that's only a part of it, but I just want to put this in some sort of perspective. Now, over my audiophile life, and certainly as over my life as a reviewer, I've lived with many different brands of speakers as my reference. Now, but actually, just before I was using the Cornwall 4s, I had Klipsch Forte 3s, slightly smaller Klipsch, and I love those speakers as well. But when the Cornwalls came, yeah, uh, Fortes went back to Klipsch, Cornwalls were in for a three-year stay. But I've, ha I've lived with TAD speakers as my reference, and B&W speakers, and Zoo speakers, and a, a long run with Magnapan speakers, 3.6 and 3.7, uh, quad electrostatic speakers, uh, Snell speakers, way back I had Snell Type A. So I don't, I'm not the kind of guy that sticks with one thing. I want to experience different types of sound. So panels, electrostatic speakers, box speakers, horn speakers, and now with the Pure Audio Project, an open baffle speaker, because the sound is so different. And now that I've had that much more time living with this speaker, there's something about the way they, well, you hear differences in recordings, or just bigger. I hear more difference. It's easier to hear what's going on in the recording with the Pure Audio Project and differences from one amplifier to the next or one DAC to the next. The, the differences just jump out more. And that's a very useful thing for a reviewer, for any audiophile, but certainly for someone who's trying to describe the sound of audio, audio products, audio components. And that's what I do. So anyway, yeah, the Pure Audio Project's gonna be here for a while. And I gotta say in the, whatever it is, I don't know, six, seven weeks of living with them, they're a very intriguing sound because they're open. <laughs> they do not sound like a box speaker or a horn speaker or even a Magnapan speaker. They just get out of the way more. Yeah, I think that that's what's going on here. They just seem to, pardon the, the, the cliche, but they do disappear more and let more music through. Now, I just want to get into a thing about better, which I've touched on in other videos, it's not that the Pure Audio Project is an all-around better speaker than the Klipsch. No, I would say right up front, the Klipsch are more dynamic, they have punchier bass, they're more alive sounding and play louder with greater ease. But the tonality of the Pure Audio Project, especially of mid-range, of, vo of vocals, of pianos and guitars and all sorts of acoustic instruments, it just sounds more natural, more coherent, more believable. And they also just disappear as sound sources way better than the Klipsch's do. And the bass, it doesn't go as deep in the Pure Audio Project, but the speed of the bass, the definition of the bass is far ahead of the Cornwalls. So they, they're doing different things, both really, really good, but I do just want to change. I want to shake things up and hear things in a different way. And of course, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in the show. So I'm not giving up on horn speakers because just in the previous episode, I was listening to the Klipsch Jubilee, a much, much, much bigger speaker with a huge horn. And I was head over heels in love with that speaker. It's not a speaker that I can have here. It's just way out of my league. It's too big. It would dominate this room too much and I have to move all this other stuff in and out of the room to continue doing reviews. So the Jubilee is just a staggering achievement by Klipsch. 
but it doesn't fit within, uh, let's say, my lifestyle. So I'm not giving up on horns, not in the slightest, but I do want to make this change and live with an open baffle speaker. I am intrigued by this sound because when you get rid of the box behind the woofer, and in this case behind the mid-range, it just opens up the sound because after all, the driver, in, in this case the mid-range and the woofer, are not pressurizing the box behind them. The sound within that box isn't re-radiating out through the woofer. So you get the sound of the woofer plus the sound within the box coming out through the woofer in a box speaker. And since this speaker, the Pure Audio Project Duet 15, doesn't have a box behind the woofer, the pressure in the front of the woofer and the back of the woofer is exactly the same. And I think that's why the sound is so fast and nimble and just so much more articulate than other speakers, woofers that are trapped inside boxes. It's the way it sounds to me. So yes, the, the Pure Audio Project Duet 15 is a high sensitivity speaker, so I can use it with low powered amplifiers like the first watt amplifiers, first watt F7, F8, G2, and the Passlabs XA25, all low powered amplifiers, no problem. This, this speaker sings with low powered amps. Uh, and I will be using it with low powered tube amplifiers as, I, as they come in for review, so that's nice. Nice to continue in that vein. But the other thing that I have to talk about with the Pure Audio Project, now that I've lived with it that much longer than when I did the review, is the imaging is just in another league compared to even the Maggies, which are no slouches in the imaging department. But this speaker has phenomenal center focus, but there's a 3D quality to the sound of it coming in front of the plane of the speakers, on the plane of the speakers, behind the speakers, it just has more depth, more, more spatial information is coming through the speakers. Now it is a dipole speaker, there's as much, as much sound coming out of the back of the speaker as the front, but that's not what's creating the depth, because if I play, well many recordings that have no depth or space to them, they can sound flat, flat as a pancake, lined up between the two speakers. It's not that the speakers create the depth, they just seem to be able to reveal the depth in recordings and 3D qualities in the recordings if they are present in the recording itself. They don't create it. No, every recording spatially sounds different, as they should, because they were recorded in different studios with different microphones, with different bands, with different engineers. Everything is changing every time you play one record to the next, and this speaker just makes it so easy to hear those differences. In other words, it's a very rewarding listening because you're always hearing new information. I think this is one of the, <laughs> the downfalls, the problems that audiophiles face is that when they hear a sameness to the sound all the time, well, they get bored, right? They, they want new sensations. And with this speaker, you get that. You get more of that kind of uh, information from the music. And that, <laughs> that, that's just, you know, every time I sit down to play music, that's one of the things I'm hearing. And it just blows me away. Absolutely knocked out by that. And then there's the bass, the bass definition, the bass clarity for electric bass instruments and acoustic bass and bass drums and anything that creates a lot of low frequency information. You just hear more detail down there, hearing a bass drums sounding more like a real bass drum where it's a big drum head being hit by a beater, you get that sense. It's not about boom, boom, boom. It's about hearing the pitches and the textures and the palpability of the bass. That's what the Pure Audio Project does so well. Way better, way better than the Klipsch Cornwall 4. So yeah, I am definitely, uh, intrigued by the possibilities of living with this speaker long term and using it within the context of different reviews of electronics and turntables and cartridges and DACs and all that stuff. I just hear more and like I say that's my job is to pay attention to these things and that's what this speaker reveals so well. 
You know, I'm sure that some of you noticed that I've been in a heavy vinyl mode over the last year or so, thanks in large part to some Technics turntables that have passed through this room, and now my reference Technics SL1200G. But in any case, I'm playing this recording by Delaney and Bonnie. Now, they were kind of like a southern rock, gospely, rootsy band. Phenomenal. A husband and wife team. And they made this recording called Motel Shot that was recorded in motel rooms. Well, mostly. And, um, and, and I had the vinyl, and I'm hearing so much more of that sense of being in the motel rooms and hearing the musicians arrayed in these very small spaces to be performing in or making a record in. And that comes through so much better on the vinyl than it does on the CD. Uh, it does over any speaker or any headphone. But I'm just saying with the Pure Audio Project speaker, it's just more so that difference of sort of being there with the band in that space or hearing into that space, I, sh I should say, is just, it's very rewarding. You just feel, or I just feel more connected to this music. So yeah, I am smitten. I am smitten by the Pure Audio Project. And the Cornwall Fours are safely on their way back to Klipsch. They were on a long-term loan, and that's the way it works here. I do long-term loans with some products, and most products come and go relatively quickly. But anyway, the Cornwall Fours are going back to Klipsch, and the Pure Audio Projects are in here. We'll see how that works out over time. But right now, I'm in. I am totally in. And I want to take you guys along for the ride with my experiences as an audiophile as a reviewer, but also as an audiophile on my personal journey. Because I have never lived with an open baffle speaker before. I've heard them, and I've reviewed others. I reviewed a Spatial Audio Lab speaker last year. I think I may be reviewing another one this coming year in 2023. Um, so it's interesting. It's a fun ride. And that's the thing I've, I've told you guys many times over the years, is if you're a new audiophile, I want you to listen to as many different types of audio as possible. Tube, electronic, solid state electronics, analog, digital, and different types of speakers. And with something like Klipsch's, you know, the company's been around a really long time, since 1946. So there's lots of used ones out there. So you can find used Klipsch heresies and fortes and cornwalls for not a lot of money. So you owe it to yourself to listen and live with a, a horn speaker system. And of course, Klipsch makes many much smaller horn speakers. One of my favorites, the Klipsch RP600M, it's dear to my heart. So anyway, that's what we got going today is the changes, the changes happening here in my, in my audiophile life. And now it's time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This one comes from my pal, Bart. He's building a jazz kissa style listening lounge, and this is a temporary arrangement he has right now for the system, which includes Wilson Yvette speakers. I've never seen those before. Ojas Art Bookshelf uh, speaker with the horn mod, two Rel S510 subwoofers, Parasound JC5, JC3+, Plus, and JC2B. Or not to be. There's also a DCS Bartok DAC Techniques SL1200G turntable with an Ornifon MC Quintet Blue moving coil cartridge. There's an Oppo BDP 105D Blu ray player. And last but not least, there's a Tascam 202 Mark V cassette deck. <laughs> I can't wait to see what Bart cooks up next. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and it's true. I am the Audiophiliac, and I am here to serve you. I'm here to serve you information and entertainment. I want to entertain you. I want it to be interesting every time you tune in to get the unexpected, not just another review after another review after another review. It's, I, want to, I want you to have a deeper experience. It's, sometimes it's about music. Sometimes it's about just ideas about audio rather than just buying another thing, you know, speaker placement ideas, all sorts of things have come down, gift ideas at the end of the year, and of course the upcoming speaker of the year. And I gotta give you a heads up, this year it will not be a speaker of the year. It will be 
speakers of the year, plural. There'll be more than one or two. So anyway, check, look for that in December. But anyway, if you dig what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can join for a couple of bucks a month, up to 50 or even $100 a month. And in the top tiers, you and I will have a conversation every month. And I thoroughly enjoy having these conversations. I've been doing this for over four years, having these conversations with audiophiles, and it's a blast. I learn a lot, and, and I enjoy every single one. And beyond that, yeah, you could subscribe to the channel. That's easy to do. Or if you just like an, a video, please hit that like button. I would very much appreciate it. And with that, my work here is at last complete. So again, thank you for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.